Stitches show. We've entered September, so it's time for the ninth installment in our 2021 Mighty Mile a Minute Calendar Blanket. And this month we're going to use something called the Ornamental Fan Stitch. The ornamental fan is, you know the one I mean, kind of a printed thin paper that's attached, pleated and attached to a bunch of thin wooden spokes and you kind of snap it open and then fan yourself. Well, that's what this stitch reminds me of. There are two rows in this pattern, so it's a little two row repeater, so it works best over an even number of rows, but if you have an odd number of rows in your strip, not a big deal, you'll be ending on a pretty little open scallop row. And no matter whether you've got a even or an odd number, I'm gonna show you how to start your border. So no worries there. You wanna make sure you've got the same size hook and the same weight of yarn. And that's all you really need to know. So let's grab our hooks, we'll grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up the September strip together. Hi everyone, Mr. and Stitches here. We have a new app available for you to play the Granny Square game from anywhere with your friends and family. The link will be in the description box down below and in the pinned comment at the top underneath this video. Thanks, have fun, and on with the tutorial! For the ornamental fan stitch, we're using the same yarn we've been using all along, which is a size 4 medium weight acrylic in my case. You want around double the amount of yarn that you usually use, um, possibly a little bit more than double, for the main pattern stitch. So I'm budgeting about 240 yards of the main pattern color. That's probably an overstatement, uh, but it's always better to have too much than too little. And the same for the border, so between 80 and 90 yards for your border color. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, some stitch markers are handy if you want to keep track of your rows a little faster, and the hook is the same one we've been using all along, a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. We're going to take our pattern color and begin with a slip knot. The foundation chain row for this stitch is 15. Once you have 15 chains, we're going to count back to the seventh chain from the hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Here's number seven. Into the seventh chain, we're going to single crochet. We're going to skip two chains. One, two. Find the next chain, and we're going to work a sort of an open scallop into it. So we're going to double crochet, chain one, into the same chain, double crochet, chain one, into the same chain, double crochet, chain one, and one more double crochet into the same chain. So You've got double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. All worked into the same chain right there. You're going to skip two chains, find the next one, and single crochet into it. And to finish the row, we're going to chain one, skip one, and into the last chain, double crochet. So remember, the first row is always a little bit funny or cumbersome. But that is what the odd rows will look like. So you've got some chains over here. There's just, if you skip this chain after your single crochet, there you've got one, two, three chains kind of running around the edge of my finger. That is going to be what counts as the double crochet on this side. Here's the double crochet on that side. So you're always gonna have a chain three or a double crochet post on either edge of each row going forward. And the odd row is always gonna have this lovely open scallop. And the scallop is kind of anchored by two single crochets. So you get this nice sort of uh, rounded effect. All right, that was row one. Let's move on to row two together. So this is the even row coming up. At the end of row one or every odd row, you're going to chain three and turn. And that chain three counts as the double crochet or the post for row two. Row two is basically all double crochets. So you're going to identify those chain one spaces in the middle of that nice open scallop, and there's three of them, one, two, three, they're right in the middle of the row, and into each of those spaces, you're going to work three double crochet. So three double crochet into the first chain one space of the scallop. Three 
then into the middle chain one space, which is the very middle of the scallop. You're going to work three double crochet. So three double crochet in each of those spaces. You're always going to ignore the little spaces on either side of the single crochets. There's your last chain one space of the scallop. So we're only focusing on that little scallop motif from row one. And you'll have nine double crochets at the end of that. So here's your chain three to turn. That counts as double crochet. You've got three double crochets worked into each of those chain one spaces of that center scallop. So that's three, six, nine double crochet. You're going to skip over. See, there's your little single crochet. You're going to skip that. You're going to find the chain that's right next to it. Skip that. And this is going to be the top of the three turning chains. So skip the single crochet, skip the chain right next to that, and double crochet into the top of the next chain. So there's your single crochet, you skipped it. There's the chain one, we skipped that. We double crocheted into the top of the turning chains. And it's going to look a lot easier uh, to, to identify the top of those turning chains from here on out because of course row one is always a little bit cumbersome. But that's row two, that's the even row. Every even row starts with a chain three. You work three double crochet into each of those spaces from the scallop of the previous row. Jump over top of the single crochet and the little chain next to it and double crochet into the chain after that. That is row two. All right, let's do a couple more rows together. Back to the odd row. At the end of every even row, you're going to chain four and turn. So the first three chains counts as a double crochet. That fourth chain is a chain one space. You're going to skip this stitch. So the double crochet that you've chained out of is already accounted for because those three chains counts as a double crochet. You're going to skip the next stitch and you're going to single crochet into the stitch after that. So you are skipping the stitch that you've chained out of because it's already being used. The chain one that's on top of those three chains accounts for that extra little stitch that you're skipping here. So you've got a double crochet chain one and you're single crocheting into the stitch right after that. Then you're going to skip two stitches, find the third. It will also be the middle stitch of those three double crochet from the previous row that were worked into that space. So skip two, find the next one. And we're going to do that lovely open scallop into that next stitch. So the very middle stitch of the row, you're going to work double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. So there's four double crochets with a chain one space in between each of them. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all worked into that middle stitch. You're going to skip two stitches, find the next one, and single crochet into it. So that makes that pretty little open scallop really bubble, right? So single crochet anchor, there's your open scallop, single crochet anchor, and to finish we're going to chain one, you're going to skip the next stitch, that would be right here, and double crochet into the top of the turning chains. And now this is why it's easy to see. The stitch you're actually skipping is a double crochet from the previous row, so you're just looking for the top of the turning chains right next to it. So it's pretty easy to see. Single crochet, chain one, skip that stitch, double crochet into the top of the turning chains. And that is the odd row. Mm, it's very pretty. Kind of reminds me of a stained glass window. All right, now the easy row, the even row, or the row two part of the pattern. We chain three, the chain three counts as a double crochet. We turn our work and we identify that pretty little scallop in the middle. We want this space, this space, and this space. Each of those three spaces gets three double crochet. So three double crochet into each of those spaces. Nice and simple. You've always got to have like one little zippy row. All right, there's your nine double crochet worked across that scallop. 
you skip that stitch because that's part of that double crochet there. You skip the single crochet, you skip the chain right next to the single crochet and you find the third. So if you have to count, you can kind of count up from the bottom, one, two, three, or find the single crochet, skip a chain and double crochet into the next chain after that. You want the third turning chain from the row before. And that basically gives you a nice big space on either side of that big fan. So you've got an open scallop and then a fan on top of it. And that's what creates this really pretty ornamental fan stitch. You've got all the pretty little, what I would consider the woodwork part of the fan down here, and then the lovely sort of spread open part of the fan that you're actually fanning yourself with. So a pretty little ornamental fan. Let's do one set more together. So an odd row and an even row, and then I'll turn you loose. After an even row, you chain three plus one. So four chains at the beginning of an odd row. That counts as a double crochet, chain one. Turn your work. You're not using this stitch, it's already accounted for. You skip the next stitch and you single crochet into the stitch after that. Skip two stitches and into the next stitch, which should be the very middle stitch of the previous row. You're going to work that open scallop, which is double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Skip two chains, single crochet into the next stitch, or skip two stitches, I should say, single crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the top of the turning chains. So you are anchoring that pretty little open scallop. There's its three little middle spaces. So chain four, skip skip the main stitch that you're chained out of, skip the next stitch, single crochet into the stitch after that, skip two stitches, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, all into the same stitch, that's also the middle stitch of the row, skip two stitches, single crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the top of the turning chains. So don't worry, it'll get into your head after a while. And then the even row is the simple one. Chain three, counts as a double crochet. Turn your work. Find those three middle chain one spaces of that lovely little scallop. Double crochet three times into each of those chain one spaces. You're only focusing on the scallop. So you're ignoring the little single crochets on either side of it. So that's nine double crochet worked across that open scallop. Then you find the single crochet, here it is here, skip the chain right after it and double crochet into the third chain. That's the third turning chain. It's the second chain away from that single crochet. So however you want to look at it. And there you go. There is your beautiful ornamental fan stitch coming together. So that's six rows. I'm going to turn you loose now. You're going to work odd even, odd even, all the way up to 78 rows, and I'll catch up with you at the top. This is row 77, so it's my second last row. It's an odd row. If you are ending on an odd row because you have an odd number of rows in your blanket strip, then you would fasten off here and you would join your yarn for the border in this space. You would use the middle space of the scallop and then you would use the other space over here. So if you have an odd number of rows, that's the spacing for your first little border side. For everyone else, that's my row 78. It's an even row, so if you're ending on an even row like I am, then that's the last stitch of the last row. I'm going to snip my yarn. You can fasten off, take a moment to weave in your tails, and then grab your border color and your blanket and we're going to start joining. We're going to take our border color now and we're all going to start with a slip knot. We're joining our yarn in the top right corner, so whether you are on an odd row or an even row, it's all the top right corner space. Join with a slip stitch. It's the same border stitch as the rest of our strips. 
So this will look very familiar. We're going to chain three to begin. That counts as a double crochet. We work two more double crochets into that corner space and that completes the first shell. We're not chaining in between shells. We're only chaining two in the corners to sort of turn the corner. So you'll have four chain two corner spaces at the end of the border row. You're going to jump to the middle stitch. If you're on an odd row, it'll be that middle space. Otherwise you want the middle stitch. You're going to work three double crochet into that center stitch. And then you're going to pop over to the other corner space and work three more double crochet. And don't worry, all of the joining will sort of even everything out. You'll have a nice even shape at the end of the row. We're going to chain one to start the corner and now we're going to join to the blanket. So remember, you're joining to the August strip and that was our little flowers stitch. And we're going to be joining in the top corner space of the border. Like I said, this will all look pretty familiar by now. Slip stitch into the space, chain one to complete the corner. And before you leave the space on your current strip, work three more double crochets into that corner space. This becomes the first shell working down the long side of your strip. Once again, we're not chaining in between stitches or chaining in between shells, but as we are joining as you go now, you're looking for the next space in between sets of three double crochet stitches on the other border strip. Slip in your hook, slip stitch, try to keep them fairly, fairly, I'm not going to say too loose, but loose enough, not too tight. That'll keep everything from puckering. And when we block everything at the end of the project, it'll give it enough slack that it'll lie nice and flat. Find the next space or the next row edge all the way down. These are all pretty easy to see. Each of these row edges have a nice big space. Work three double crochet around the row post. It's either a double crochet or a chain three. Find the next set of three. Slip your hook in between them. Slip stitch. Back to the other strip. Three double crochet in the next row edge and so on. You want to make sure you join with a slip stitch in between each set of three double crochets on the previous strips border before you move on to the next row edge on this strip to work those three double crochets. I will see you down at the bottom. All right, that's three double crochet worked around every row edge and linked with a slip stitch in between the sets of three double crochet from the previous border strip all the way down to the bottom. I've worked my last shell along this side in the bottom corner space and I'm just going to join it to the bottom corner space of the border on the other blanket strip and that's it. I will chain one more to complete that. So chain, slip stitch, chain into that bottom corner and now we're working across the bottom. So there are three double crochets worked additionally into that bottom corner space. And now that's the bottom flush with the panel next door. No chains, we find the middle bottom space along the bottom of our strip. Three double crochet into that one. Hop over to the corner space over here, it might feel a little small, so get your finger in there. Corner space, three double crochet. Chain two to turn the corner and let's move our big blanket here all the way around. And now it's the home stretch. So we want a shell or three double crochet in every single row edge all the way up. If you've got 78 rows, you'll have 78 shells. So before we leave the bottom corner, let's work our first shell of the second long side. So shell, chain two shell is in every single corner. There's the corner. 
And now I just look for the big spaces all the way up. Three double crochet, no chains in between, all the way up the second side. We're on the home stretch. I'll catch up with you at the top. That's three double crochet worked into the edge of every single row all the way up to the top. We're going to work our last three double crochet in the top corner space where we started the border row. One, two, three. Chain your last two to turn the corner. We're going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three. And fasten off. Grab your scissors, snip our yarn, and you can take a moment to weave in those tails. You'll have two of them right up at the top there. And that is the September strip, that lovely ornamental fan pattern. Really, you can see it now. And once we get the whole thing blocked at the end of the project, those little tiny spaces, everything's really going to show up uh, with a lot more zazz. <laughs> but that's a still a few months off. And just in time for the cooler nights ahead, my blanket is getting just about big enough to snuggle under. <laughs> and that is the September strip. Once again, beautiful little open ornamental fans. I'm curious, let me know down in the comments section. Of the two rows, which one did you find the quickest? I know that the odd row, or row number one of the pattern, had a little more stitch thinking to do. You know you're working on that open scallop. And the second row was just double crochets, but I found the first row tended to go faster than the second row. There were more stitches to be made in the second row, even though they were just double crochets. I know, I'm curious. I'd like to know how you found it. And that said, we hope you enjoyed making this strip along with us this month. We'll see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe!